G'day guys, it's Dutchy. Welcome to part one of building a Wombat Steam Locomotive. In this episode we look at what you need to build a tender for the Wombat. If you like videos about model engineering and mini trains, give this video a big thumbs up, click on the subscribe button and hit that bell. It really helps the channel. Thank you. In my last video, I asked for some project suggestions. Leave a comment, let me know what kind of project you think I should tackle next. Make sure it's model engineering related, otherwise I'll probably just ignore it. Mind Yourself Vlog suggested the Alice class locomotive, originally built by the Hunslet Engine Company. With models available from Maxitrack in the UK. Bastian commented, suggesting a wombat. No, oh, not that kind of wombat. This kind of wombat. I'm already subscribed to Australian Model Engineering magazine, so I have the drawings, and I really like the idea of building something myself. I've never built anything myself before, so you're probably in for some laughs if I stuff this up. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank Ben from ENJ Winter Bolton Scale Models for his excellent customer service. Ben made arrangements for me to head out to the workshop and film some of the kits that you're about to see. So Ben, thank you very much. Without any further ado, let's get into what you need to build a wombat. First you'll need the plans, which were being put out through Australian Model Engineering magazine but since they stopped existing, the plans are now being supplied by ENJ Winter. I'll drop a link to their website in the description below. There are nine kits for the Wombat Tender. Kit one includes the two side frames, two footrest brackets, four axle box keeps, and eight total horn block top and bottoms. I spent a little time Googling today, but I still don't know what horn block top and bottoms are. Let me know in the comments if you know, otherwise, I'll be forced to read a manual. No, God, please, no, no! Kit 2A has the front and rear buffer beams, front and rear couplers, drawbar to connect the tender to the locomotive, as well as the pump and injector brackets. Kit 2B, no problem identifying anything here. This is the wheels and axles. The wheels are the fancy and visible kind, as you can see, or not see. Seriously though, the wheels were still at the machine shop as they were part of a much larger batch of things being made and should be available by the end of the month. On to kit 2C, which I would recommend purchasing before you think about starting any assembly as this is most of the screws, fasteners and rivets required for the tender. 2D is the axle box covers. The top two rows show the individual pieces and the bottom row shows the covers on axle boxes. On to kit 3, the smallest and cheapest kit of them all. Here we have the four brake hangers, rear brake beam bracket, front cross beam level, and brake shaft lever. I haven't figured out what's what yet, which is why I didn't highlight them. Might be time for that manual after all. Kit 4 is the tender base plate. Easy enough to figure out, as there's only one item here. Kit number 5 has the two side panels, rear panel, front panel, bunker panel, two small infill panels for the corners, and a bunch of screws. The final kit for the tender, kit 6, has the tender's top panel, a cut and folded filler cover, and four seat brackets. That's it for the kits, and the tools are fairly simple. We're going to need a drill, finally a use for my Ryobi cordless drill, you also need an M4 tapping bit, which I intend to use in my cordless drill, some drill bits, a countersink bit, and a rivet punch. You've probably noticed at this point that I forgot to mention the springs in 2C. There were only two springs in the picture. There were only two springs at the workshop at the time. 
there should be eight springs in that kit. If there are any other mistakes in the future, I'll treat them the same way the Australian Model Engineering did, and I'll mention it in the next episode. That's all I have for now. See you next time.